The Cascadia megaquake will likely be the biggest natural disaster in U.S. history, and new research shows it could be far worse than experts once thought. Not just violent shaking, but months without power, massive fuel spills that trigger fires, even toxic clouds drifting over communities. And that's not just speculation. These warnings come from state emergency planners and peer-reviewed studies that model what Cascadia is capable of. And the scariest part? Scientists say the real danger may not come during the quake, but in the hours and days that follow. The last Cascadia megaquake struck at 9 p.m. on January 26, 1700. How do we know the exact moment? Because across the Pacific, Japanese records describe a mysterious tsunami that hit villages without warning, with no earthquake felt on their shores. Scientists later realized that wave was born here, in Cascadia. Geologists later found ghost forests along the Pacific Northwest coast, stands of dead cedar trees killed when the land suddenly dropped and salt water rushed in. Together, the tsunami records and the drowned forests gave scientists proof of Cascadia's last megaquake. That was 325 years ago, and here's the bad news. Geologists say we're now inside the window for the next one. When it hits, the consequences could rival Japan's 2011 Tohoku earthquake, one of the costliest natural disasters in history. But there's a critical difference. Japan was prepared. We are not. So what makes this fault so dangerous? And why could it be even deadlier than earthquakes we've seen before? When Cascadia finally slips, scientists warn the shaking won't be like anything most of us have felt. Along the coast, ground motions could exceed 1G, strong enough to literally lift cars off the pavement. And unlike a typical quake that rattles for seconds, this one could keep going for three to six minutes. Geophysicists explain that duration is what makes Cascadia so dangerous. The longer the shaking, the more likely buildings, bridges, and lifelines like pipelines and power grids will collapse. One study from the USGS compared this shaking to slamming your car brakes while driving 60 miles an hour, except the whole ground is the car and it doesn't stop after a few seconds. And even though cities like Seattle or Portland sit inland, experts say that doesn't make them safe. With millions of people living among aging bridges, old water mains, and electrical systems never built for this, the aftermath could be catastrophic. And then comes the wave. Models show a tsunami up to 100 feet tall racing toward the coast, with as little as 10 to 15 minutes of warning. For many coastal towns, that's not enough time to evacuate. Oregon's emergency agency estimates more than 30,000 people could be in the tsunami zone when it hits. For many, survival will depend on whether they can reach high ground fast enough. But here's what most people don't realize. Experts say the deadliest consequences may not come from the shaking or the wave, but from what the quake could unleash inside our cities. Just a few miles from downtown Portland sits one of the most dangerous places in the Pacific Northwest, the Critical Energy Infrastructure Hub. It handles nearly 90% of Oregon's fuel supply. Massive tanks of jet fuel, gasoline, and diesel line the banks of the Willamette River. The problem? Engineers say many of these tanks were built decades before modern seismic codes, some dating back to the 1940s. Studies show the soils beneath them are highly vulnerable to liquefaction, where solid ground briefly turns to liquid during strong shaking. In that moment, tanks can rupture, pipelines can snap, and millions of gallons of fuel could spill into the river. In seconds, researchers warn it could equal the Deepwater Horizon oil disaster, but unleashed instantly, right inside a major city. Unlike an offshore spill, this would erupt in the heart of a city, threatening drinking water, fisheries, and critical shipping routes at the exact moment people need them most. And fuel isn't the only risk. Recent reports revealed other hazardous chemicals stored nearby, substances like chlorine gas and ammonia that can form toxic plumes if released. Under the wrong summer wind conditions, those plumes could drift over Portland, putting thousands of lives in danger. Experts modeled scenarios where summer heat traps the gas close to the ground. In the worst case, thousands could die simply trying to evacuate through the fumes. And here's the most alarming detail. Portland isn't unique. Scientists have identified dozens of similar high-risk sites across the Pacific Northwest, all sitting on unstable ground. Which means this isn't just one city's problem, it's a regional time bomb. But the danger doesn't stop at fires or toxic spills. When Cascadia ruptures, the land itself will move. Scientists say parts of the coast could suddenly drop by as much as six feet in minutes. 
That's the equivalent of several centuries of sea level rise happening instantly. Scientists call this co-seismic subsidence. In plain terms, it means land that has been rising for centuries suddenly drops, leaving low-lying towns permanently below sea level. New research from 2025 shows that this sudden subsidence could permanently expand floodplains by over 100 square miles. In some scenarios, the number of homes, businesses, and roads at risk of flooding could double or even triple if sea levels keep rising into the next century. That means highways, ports, and even schools that are safe today could become permanent flood zones overnight. Picture it, entire neighborhoods that sit above the high tide line today instantly falling into the flood zone and never coming back out. It's a double disaster, first the quake and tsunami, then a permanent redrawing of the coastline that leaves entire communities underwater. So if the science is this clear, the question becomes, what can actually be done to prepare before the clock runs out? If the risks are this well known, why hasn't it been fixed yet? The truth is, scientists and engineers already know how to make cities survive megaquakes. Modern fuel tanks can be built to resist Cascadia level shaking. Bridges can be retrofitted, and newer high-rises in places like Seattle are far safer than the old brick buildings that still line downtown. But here's the catch. Retrofitting costs billions. And while Japan poured resources into earthquake safety after disasters like Kobe in 1995, experts say the Pacific Northwest is still nearly a thousand years behind in preparedness. That gap means many of the bridges, pipelines, and schools people rely on every day would likely fail when Cascadia ruptures. Engineers describe it as a race against time. Will upgrades be finished before the quake arrives? Because while governments debate billion-dollar infrastructure projects, what about the rest of us? What can ordinary people actually do to prepare? Most people think surviving a megaquake comes down to what's in your go bag. But experts say the number one factor isn't supplies, it's people. Disaster response specialists point out that in the first 72 hours after a major quake, emergency crews will be overwhelmed. In most neighborhoods, survival depends on neighbors helping neighbors. That means knowing who around you has medical training, who has tools, even who owns a ham radio. In past disasters, those informal networks saved more lives than official responders. Of course, supplies still matter. Agencies recommend at least two weeks of food and clean water for every person in your home. That's because roads, grocery stores, and supply chains could all be crippled for months. And for those living on the coast, survival may come down to minutes. Emergency officials warn you should already know your evacuation route, because when the shaking stops, you may have less than 15 minutes before a wall of water arrives. Preparedness isn't just a list of supplies, it's a mindset. Families that talk through different scenarios ahead of time are far more likely to make smart choices under pressure. But even if individuals prepare, the question remains, what does Cascadia's future look like after the quake? Chaos or resilience? Experts agree on one thing. The quake itself is inevitable, but the scale of the disaster is not. If cities invest in stronger infrastructure, if communities plan ahead, and if families prepare together, the Pacific Northwest could recover far faster than most people imagine. Japan proved it's possible. After the 2011 Tohoku quake and tsunami, communities rebuilt and stronger systems were put in place to reduce future risks. And there are reasons for optimism. New technologies like fiber optic seafloor cables are being tested right now to detect Cascadia earthquakes in real time. That could give coastal towns precious extra minutes of warning when every second counts. The bottom line? The quake will come, but whether it becomes a catastrophe or a challenge we overcome is up to us. Do you live in the Pacific Northwest? What's one step you've taken to prepare or one thing you plan to do after watching this? Share it in the comments. Your idea might help someone else survive. And if you found this video valuable, consider subscribing because the more people who know about risks like Cascadia, the better prepared we all are.